Surveillance can simply be defined as the action of closely watching a person or a group of people, especially those under suspicion of a crime. Surveillance is not exactly a novel concept. It has been in existence for many years. Its original purpose was to watch and monitor the acts and behavioral patterns of suspected and convicted criminals. However, in recent times, especially with the introduction of new technologies, it seems to have exceeded its original objective. In developed countries, especially the United United Kingdom and the United States of America, virtually everybody is under surveillance on a daily basis. According to Foucault, surveillance is a shameful act of monitoring and enforcing control on individuals or groups using a, stru a structured system of regulatory procedures. Although this definition was given more than three decades ago, it aptly describes what surveillance has become in our world today. Also according to Parenti, some of the earlier forms of surveillance were seen in colonial America, where slave owners kept memorandum books about slave movements and activities. Other forms of surveillance used on slaves then were slave passes, organized slave patrols, and wanted posters detailing escapee slaves. Security versus liberty. In today's modern society, the intensity of surveillance has become heightened with the introduction of different technologies that support it. These are popularly known as surveillance technologies. Some of these technologies include tracking devices, CCTV cameras, wiretapping. The most Commonly used technologies are the CCTV camera. Reports estimate that the average American is caught on CCTV about 200 times a day. This presentation will, however, focus on what has happened in the United States of America, which is arguably one of the earliest known uses of surveillance technology. According to Morton, 2006, the first known instance of what happened took place during the Civil War, where opposing sides would tap into each other's telegraph links and reproduce the messages being conveyed. The act of what happened has since evolved into tapping into phone calls, internet search online shopping, bank transactions, etc. The US government initially tapped into phone and other records of suspected and convicted individuals and groups with connections to terrorist organizations so as to monitor their activities and to protect the citizenry from attacks and danger. However, the wiretapping has now extended to innocent citizens. An estimate of 3 million Americans phone calls are tapped, to which is an estimated 1.9 trillion calls. Although the original intent of wiretapping by the US government was to safeguard the lives and properties of its citizens. It also violates the privacy and basic rights of both individuals and organizations alike. So the question is, is what happened ethical? This will be discussed further subsequently. Kickup and Carrigan 2000 identify three main types of privacy, namely informational privacy, personal privacy should not be revealed, expressive privacy, freedom from pressure and dissemination of information when making personal decisions, and accessibility privacy, which deals directly with surveillance, where physical closeness and private or public surveillance might lead to fear distraction or inhibition. The focus here is on accessibility privacy, where surveillance technologies are put in place for the safety of individuals. Currently, this has caused more harm than good, as the pitfalls are to its benefits. Accessibility of information that is regarded private often poses as a threat to end users, even when these technologies are meant to protect. Government's involvement in this attack, following a bill passed into support of this, has made it even worse since the 9-11 terrorist attack. The right to freedom is constantly being threatened, as more technologies are introduced. Technologies such as spywares, tracking cookies, etc. are also used by private companies in the advertising industry to study the behavior of website visitors in order to capture various statistical data. However, this form of surveillance does not always store users' personal information by their name. Arguably, the intent of the authority in the introduction of these technologies does not encourage indiscriminate use. Therefore, surveillance in this context, as stated by the law, supports the authority's use of surveillance technologies to protect. As such, it can be seen as an ethical decision from a general viewpoint. In mid-2008, BBC News published Swedish Parliament approval of a controversial law which allowed authorities to spy on cross-border emails and telephone traffic, thereby following the examples set by other nations such as China, Saudi Arabia, and the USC. Although the law was intended to act as checks and balances to protect national security by filtering the domestic communication and monitoring only international lines, several problems followed after this as the filtering of domestic traffic from international traffic failed to meet its objective. Many people opposed this and requested the law should be scrapped. According to CATS 1991, in the 1980s survey conducted on personal privacy, most respondents had the opinion that the telephone was the largest source of privacy invasion based on telephone tag. However, their responses were based on their immediate circumstances, not taking into account the security issues that were faced by many developed nations. In conclusion, from a theoretical viewpoint, the trade-offs on these issues are clearly a case of utilitarian theory, as the intent of the authorities were the overall good of the populace. Thank you. 